Hello and welcome to a 2018 holiday coding challenge. Snowflakes! So I was uh, perusing the internet last night and I found this page. I think my search term was like Brownian motion snowflake fractal. And I found this page, it's from a website uh, called Code Golf. Uh, that, that has a lot of different coding challenges on it. Uh, I think the idea of the challenge is to try to write the shortest amount of code to create this kind of effect. I am not going to attempt that. I'm probably going to write the longest amount of code to make this kind of effect. But my goal is to try to make a snowflake pattern like this. Now, uh, if you read over this web page, and there's a few different, this is an example that was made in Mathematica, which I don't understand at all. Um, but this, um, the algorithm that's described here is you can, um, is here that it's a Brownian tree on an integer lattice. That sounds so fancy. The idea is if you just think about a number line or the x-axis of any coordinate system and I were to start with a point back here and I were just to allow that point to like randomly move around, do a random walk so to speak, random walk, and at some point I would have to tell it to stop. So maybe, maybe what I would do um, uh, is I would tell it to stop if it got to like over here, <laughs> a pass, and this is maybe the zero, zero coordinate. If it got to here, it should stop. And then I'm gonna start another one. And I'm gonna let that one do a random walk. Now it's going to stop also if it gets to either past here or if it touches another previous, I'll call these particles. And this, by the way, is basically uh, an algorithm called diffusion limited aggregation. And this is actually something that I have done previously in a coding challenge. I'll pull up uh, that page right here. You can, um, I'm mostly going to implement the exact same thing, but you can see you get this branching pattern. Um, so here, the dot, there's one dot that starts at the center and everything kind of branches out from there. And we could use a recursive tree structure. There's all sorts of kinds of ways we could create this branching pattern. But what's interesting about this, how could we make a snowflake? Well, I don't really know. I'm not no expert on the actual science of snowflakes, but if you've looked at most snowflakes designs, they are in a hexagonal pattern. And we can think of that as a bunch of like triangular slices, you know, slices of a pizza pie right here, right? So if I were to kind of constrain this branching to within this sort of half of this slice, like right here, then what I could do is I could take this I could reflect it on the other side, which would give it some symmetry, and then rotate it also around six times. And I think, I'm pretty sure that's what that is happening in that animation that I showed at the beginning. So this is what I'm going to attempt to do. I'm sure, I'm not sure, but I expect there are lots of creative possibilities with color and improving the algorithm and size and rendering that you could do from watching this. So my hope is that we will now be filled with a world of code made s snowflakes. But um, let's, let's start this and see. It's, this is similar probably also to like what you would do to make a kaleidoscope program, I think. So let's start trying to do this. I'm gonna do this in processing, uh, which is a Java-based programming environment. This is, by the way, being recorded during a uh, fundraiser. You can go to processingfoundation.org slash support to make a donation to the nonprofit processing. Um, and uh, I will also release a JavaScript version in P5.js that you can also use to uh, make this thing happen in the browser. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do is I just wanna make a particle. Oh, I guess I need to have a class. <laughs> so let's make a uh, class called particle. Do I dare use p vectors? Let's try to be simple for a little bit here for a second. Let's start without p vectors and let's just make the particle have an x and a y. And I'm going to say the particle is gonna start at um, some other x and y. So this, are, this, is a, an op, this is a class from which I'm going to make particle objects. And this is the class's constructor that is going to receive an x and a y and create the particle there. I probably actually don't, I could have just used a single vector actually, but that's fine. Let's make a particle class. Um, and then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a function called like update and I'm gonna say x equals, so I'm gonna do a really simple random walk, which it's all, I'm gonna make the particle, I'm gonna start this way. I probably wanna like start the particle somewhere around here and then have it randomly walk in this direction to stay within this slice. But just for simplicity's sake, let's start it right here right now and have it randomly go this way. I'm gonna say x equals, uh, w uh, x minus equals one, <laughs> y plus equal uh, some random number between uh, negative one and one. 
All right, so let's do that. And then um, let's make a particle. I'm going to call it current. And let's say size 600, 600 for the window. And I'm going to make a new particle, which is going to start at 600 comma 0. And I'm going to say background 0, uh, current dot update. And then let's also write a function like show. So I'm going to write a function called show. And let's just draw this as uh, it'll be white with a white outline. And uh, this should probably have a size, too. Let's give it a radius. And I can just set that always to be like uh, 3. <laughs> I don't know, making this up. Ellipse uh, x comma y r, com r times 2 r times 2. Because the radius is, the diameter is the radius times 2. All right. So now, if I were to say, um, oh, this should be good. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's wandering around up there. Okay, so one thing I want to do is I really, th this is going to work much better if everything can be relative to the center. So I'm going to translate 0, 0 to the center. Uh, let's do that. Translate uh, width divided by 2 height divided by 2, um, then the particle should actually start at width divided by 2, because it's that far out. We could start further out, but and now we can see, there it is. There's my particle. Go, go particle. You can do it. You can make it to the center. Okay, it's just going to keep going. So there's, I need some way of telling it to stop. <laughs> so let's say uh, if current dot uh, finished, then what I want is I want to have a big array. I mean, I could just not erase the, I could render it to like a, a separate graphics object or something. But let's, this will be the less efficient way, but let's make an array list that is full of particles. Let's call this the snowflake. Uh, snowflake equals new, uh, what was I saying? Array list. New array list of particles. And then if it's finished, I'm going to say snowflake dot add the current particle, and then I should remake the current particle again. Like I should make a new current particle. And then I also should, for every particle p in Snowflake, I should show them all. So the idea here is that I have this particle wandering. As soon as it's done, it gets added to the list, and a new one starts wandering. wandering. So I need to implement this finished function. This, you can see this red squiggly is like, I don't know what that is. What does it mean for a particle to be finished? And I can say Boolean finished, because I want this function to return a Boolean variable. I mean, yeah, a Boolean value, true or false. Return uh, x is less than 0. So it's finished when x is less than 0. Obviously, I'm going to have to get more sophisticated than that, but that will be a good start. So let's see here. Go, particle, go. Go, particle, go. Go, particle, go. Stop. Go, particle, go. Go, particle, go. Go, particle, go. Go, particle, stop. Okay, so that's good. This is kind of working. I actually, I really kind of want to reflect through the kaleidoscope thing now so we always see that. Oh, that'll be so fun. So the particle is finished if also, if it's, um, if it's past zero or if it intersects another particle. So I guess I could say if current is finished or current uh, intersects snowflake, the existing. So now I need to write also another function called boolean intersects. And does it intersect? The snowflake is just an array list, right? Ugh a particular snowflake. And then um, let's just put a return uh, false here for a second, make sure this is still working. So it's still working. It's never going to stop. But uh, now it will also, um, if, OK, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's so hard to talk in code. If it intersects a snowflake, I have to just check every other snowflake against it. And current is not currently in the snowflake array, so I don't have to check it against itself. So I'm going to assume. Uh, a result, I'm going to assume it's not inter intersecting anything. Then I'm going to check everything for particle uh, s in snowflake. If, uh, and then I just need to get the distance between sx, sy, and this x, and this dot y. By the way, I should mention, 
I have this thing this this where I always forget the this dot, this, this dot. dot. But actually in Java, the this dot is assumed. Um, but, but in this case, I kind of felt like I wanted to put it in there because I want the distance between s.x and this.x, this.y, but I don't actually need it. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to say if the distance is less than the radius times 2 also, then uh, result equals true. And I can also break out of the list, the, the loop. Like I don't need to keep checking. I can say break and then return result. So now this should get me that it's going to stop if it, uh, if it intersects another dot or gets past zero. Come on. Oh, that was exciting. It worked. Go, 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 go. This is like so slow. So this is actually be, it's sort of interesting to think about whether you want to animate this or not. Um, great. So this is working. What I want to do right now, let's, let's do the crazy thing I want to do, which is kaleidoscope it. So I want to actually now, while this is happening, I want to reflect it along this axis and then also rotate it around six times. I think six is the right number. <laughs> I'm not really sure. OK, so in order to do that, it's really all about here and here. Let's see, how do I want to reflect it? I could use the scale function, right? Like um, push, let's just use push and pop just in case. Pop, scale one, negative one. Like with that reflected around the, whoops, uh, <laughs> oh, changes. This used to work and now it doesn't. By the way, it's push and pop in P5, but in processing, it's push matrix and pop matrix. Is this actually going to work? Oh, yeah, look at that. It's reflected around the x-axis. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> so that worked. Then what I want to do is, in addition to that, I also want to do this six times. So I'm going to say 4 uh, int i equals 0. i is less than pi divided by oh, 2 pi. No, no, i is less than 6. <laughs> Let's just use an integer, i plus plus. Then I'm just going to say rotate pi divided by 6, right? Oh, that's wrong. Rotate pi divided by 3. There we go. Cool. So now we've got it kind of reflected and kaleidoscoping. Ooh, this is fun. All right. So you can see how this is. By the way, we're kind of done. <laughs> it's just a matter of uh, there's a few things I think that are worth cleaning up here. First of all, we're really going to have to wait a really long time watching it, although I really do like this kind of animation idea of like watching it build up over time. Um, but there's also a kind of an issue here. Like I really should constrain, like I sh this thing that's moving this way, I think I want to constrain it within this slice. Like I don't want to let it to go outside of the slice. So in order to do that, uh, while it's moving, updating, I should, oh, this is why it would have been good to use a, a, a vector. Let's actually change this. I'm going to say p vector position. And I'm just going to call it pause for position. And then I can also make this x and y. And I'm going to say uh, pause equals a new p vector, x and y. And then I'm going to say pause.x, pause.y, and pause.x, pause.y. And then s.pause.x. It might be a more elegant way to do this pause.x, pause.y, and pause.x. OK, so this should be the same as what I had before. But what, what I like about this is I can actually get the angle now. If I have it in a vector, I can say the angle equals position.heading. And then what I could do is I could basically say angle should be constrained between 0 and uh, pi divided by 6. because I kind of want a 30 degree angle there, I think. Um, Oh, and I want to constrain the angle. And then I could just make a new vector. So if I say the uh, magnitude is the magnitude, and then I can re, there's probably a way to like rotate the vector without making a new one. But I, I can really just say now, pause.x equals magnitude. I mean, I can make a new vector. Pause equals p vector dot from, from angle, angle and then pause.setmag magnitude. So this is not a very efficient way of doing this because I'm making a new object. But basically, I'm just taking the existing vector, whatever it is. Like if this is it here, represented as this arrow, I'm basically constraining the angle 
to here, and then making a new vector that looks like this. So as it's wandering, it can't go past here, and it can't go past here. Let's see if that works. I mean, it's sort of hard to tell, but it's kind of, you know, is this really different? I think we might see the difference if I were to speed this up. Oh, weird. Oh, I think I know what the issue is. It's never going to go past zero, right? I think it's never going to go past zero because I'm constraining the angle. So even if it gets past zero, I put the angle back. So look at this. It's never going to get past zero. Eh, let's just make it less than one. Let's make it um, never go less than, where is that? In update, in finished. Yeah, let's just say less than one. <laughs> OK. And N Gramst in the chat says, do you think randomizing the starting position? Yeah, I definitely should randomize the starting position. I think that'll be more interesting. OK, so this is working, working again. Let's speed this up. While current is not finished and it's not intersecting. So I could, like, I could basically put a while loop here in draw that's basically saying, like, keep updating, update, update, update until you're done. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. Hey, ta-da, that's cool. Wait, why is it? Uh, I don't like, hold on. I feel like it doesn't look very snowflakey. We should um, rotate pi divided by three. Yeah, <laughs> no, pi divided by six. There we go, <laughs> that's better. It should be, the, that line should be vertical. Now you're right, it's not very, it doesn't branch out so much. Let's try some things. One thing would be, um, we could kind of let it wander off further. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, it's also, the other thing that's happening here is it's just like, it's never ending. It's never ending. So what if we, um, okay, so let's randomize the starting position. Hmm. Um, so again, if I were being sort of smart, smart, uh, probably a, a, the best way to do this, I don't know what counts as best, but it would probably make sense for me to, uh, kind of randomize the starting position along the path of this kind of circle of radius width, and then randomize a starting vector maybe that points towards the center. But I think I can get the same effect, loosely the same effect, by just kind of randomizing the height. So like what if I let it start between 0 and 10 pixels? Yeah, that's kind of nice. I mean, this is very snowflakey. Okay, one more thing that I'm going to do. Let's just make this full screen. Uh, full screen. Let's, oh, we should probably make this height divided by two um, because, oh, that doesn't actually really matter. Let's make it width divided by two. Let's try. All right, here we go. Full screen. All right, here it is. Here is your, whoa, it's crazy because it, it came out from so far. Here is your snowflake generator. <laughs> this is my in processing, Brownian motion, diffusion limited aggregation, snowflake generator. There is so much you could do now, right? You could start to think about color. You could start to think more about the sort of like, what if it were a vector and you'd play with the velocity or what, how, did you, how could you constrain it? How could you animate it in different ways? But this is the basic idea. Here we go. We now have a snowflake pattern generated, which is very fractal, kaleidoscopy like thing for the holidays. Make your snowflakes. Maybe you could even do something where you make these much smaller and save them as little PNGs, and then you have you generate like thousands of different snowflake patterns. All right, I, I'm sure you will come up with some interesting improvements on this. Please check the video's description for a link at thecodingtrain.com to where you can um, submit your own version of this, and also there'll be the JavaScript implementation there. And I encourage you, if you enjoyed this video, to consider supporting the Processing Foundation, processingfoundation.org/support. Um, uh, um, we could use your support. Thank you very much and goodbye.